What is up, everybody? Isaac Parks, Isaac Punts here. Today, we are doing something special. We're doing a QA. and a uh, I have played at FCS, D2, FBS, levels of college, uh, in that order, respectively. I've done a lot of transferring. And today, I wanted to come on and field your guys' questions about what it's like playing in college, how to get to college, what, what's the recruiting process like, how, what weights should I lift to get into college, how do I get better at punting, just all sorts of general questions about punting. <laughs> Uh, I've been coaching for a while, I've been punting for 10 plus years. Uh, it's finally time that I field some of your guys' questions. Some of the most popular questions I get, so let's just add lots of very good questions. Okay, so very first question. What is the best way to get more consistent with my drip and get more height and distance? So if you want better drip, one of the things I always go for, try to get a visor, okay, maybe an arm sleeve. Okay, if, if you want a good one, it's always get tatted up. Look at Lou Headley, amazing amounts of drip that he just wears all the time. Um, <clears throat> very good, consistent amounts of drip. The drippage there is nice. A good little touch. Maybe have a chain on under your pads. Okay, if they can see the chain, that is so incredibly dripped out. It is unbelievable. Uh, that being said, I think there was a typo, and you're probably asking about how to get better with your drop. Uh, <clears throat> and that is a little bit easier, honestly. Uh, practice it. Okay, there's a lot of drops that can work. I don't know what your drop looks like specifically. Um, but practicing it over and over again, and most importantly, practice it at game speed. Don't do it just walking around all the time. That doesn't always help. It doesn't translate. If you feel like it's not helping the drop that you're doing, then you need to find other ways to practice. Practice it with wet hands. Practice it with dry hands. Practice it in all different weather conditions. Figure out what works for you. The two most common mistakes that I see you guys make is that they just release. Good thing for you to do is practice fully opening up the hand and then bringing the arm away in one fluid motion that will get that drop super clean no more batting it with your thumb no more bumping it with your pinky it should be a really good, great way <laughs> and uh get more height and distance two ways a better your form try to get more hips through always hard to tell with questions like these because everybody's form is different uh hips is always a big thing that i see in guys <clears throat> Uh, drop height can be a, bit, a big thing for getting better height. And as far as distance, hit the weight room, get more lean, going downfield. Always things that can help out for the younger guys. Next, in my opinion, what division was better to play for, D1 or D2? <clears throat> so, I mean, honestly, if I just have to be straight up, okay, I was a D2 All-American. I led the nation uh, in punting yards, punting average as in a D2. So that was a lot of fun. Like as far as just like strict, straight up fun to be in, uh, D2 was just, it was just a blast, you know, it was kind of like a big fish, you know, in the water there. So I was just having a good time, <laughs> but D1 being surrounded by all that awesome talent, um, the, the talent, imagine the talent curves looking like this. So here's the D1 talent curve, right? It's like right over here. And then the D2 talent curve is like the D1 talent curve, slightly shifted to the left. So your upper end talent still the same. I played against... The highest draft pick I played against was at D2, but the most consistent high draft picks I played against were the D1 guys, right? So the, I played against uh, Kyle Duggar, got drafted second round by the New England Patriots, um, and he was a D2 guy. So upper end talent at D2, super high, but more consistent high talent is at D2. Next, uh, what do I have to focus on for the rest of the year? Uh, getting an NFL look, thank you. <laughs> Uh, how do I get recruited from a small school? Two things. One, exposure. Exposure, exposure, exposure. Try to go to camps. Try to go just put stuff out on Twitter. Just blast it out there. Tag coaches. Uh, tag the account at Kicking Film. Okay, they just retweet all the film that they see. Just put it out there for everybody. So tag them. Follow them. Um, if you are work with me or work with any kicking coach, always tag them so they can retweet it. It's just about getting seen. You just need one guy to see you and believe in you, and you can get picked up. So just put it out there. Put as much film as possible out there because they can't recruit what they can't see. So I'm in the UK and really want to play football in the US. Any advice on how to get there? I'm 17. Okay, so this is similar to like getting recruited from a small high school. Try to reach out to some of the international punting coaches. Uh, reach out to Aaron Perez. Reach out to myself. Reach out to just anybody that, that does the across the sea punting. Just try to get in with them. Get some film running right. Get some of that uh, exposure going because if you have the talent, you can play. Look at, look at Australia. Look at all over the U.S. Guys come over here and play. They get shipped in. So it's the same thing. It's all about just keep working your craft, 
get the exposure out there, get the playing time. Okay, boom, next. Best way to help my son in his recruiting process and getting noticed. Okay, so there's a lot of this. People really worried about getting noticed. A, one, game film. Have to be good in the headspace to play in a game. Coaches love that. If they're not the best in game, make sure that they're getting tons of out of practice film and keep it going, keep it running. Rolling film is gonna be your best friend. Continuous punts. Don't just show one good punt. Don't show it all cut up. String together five, six, seven good punts in a row. Send that to coaches. Next, show that you have good op time. Okay, this is another huge thing for getting noticed. Keep that op time. If you're hitting good punts in a 1.3 to 1.4 op time, college coaches love that. If you hit good punts with good direction in a 1.3 to 1.4 op time, coaches love that. When I say good punts, just hit a 44-0 to the numbers with a 1.3 op time, and coaches will eat that up. You don't need to be hitting 50-yard 5.0s okay, to the sideline. It's just good, 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 and then do it consistently. Don't just do it once. Keep it going and going and going and going and going. Boom, punting into the wind. How do I punt into the wind? I don't know, punt into the wind. Just kidding, easy one, okay? The wind will do two things. It'll push you back and mentally make you feel like all your momentum is keeping you upright. The best thing to do into the wind, really drive those shoulders downfield, okay? Drive downfield, push the ball downfield, and your ball that you're trying to hit is gonna be completely different than the ball you're gonna try to hit when there's a breeze at your back or no breeze at all. Okay, you're trying to hit a 42, or 48 like 42 and what's gonna happen is as that ball moves the winds gonna slow it down and it's also gonna shorten it up so 48 42 might turn into a 45 45 that was always my mindset kicking into the wind you're trying to hit that a little bit more of a driver right you're not trying to break the ratio don't try to hit the 55 39 just just narrow up that ratio make it a little bit more distance heavy a little bit less hang time heavy right because like uh, my my coach always says Mr. Aaron Perez, he says, if you try to hit a 4.8, you might hit the 4.8, but you're also probably going to fair catch it yourself, okay? So just try to drive it. Get it downfield. That's what's most important at the end of the day. Give, Even if it's a, a little bit more of a liner than you want, give your guys a chance to play football. Give them a chance to make the tackle. They can't make the play if you're the one catching the ball, okay, four yards behind the line of scrimmage. Okay, punting differences between mid-tier FCS, Ivy League, and Patriot and CAA versus FBS. Okay, so like difference in, in punting between like FCS and FBS. That's the thing. So like, like I said, with a talent curve, the top end of punting is, is all kind of similar, right? The best punters between each division are, are going to be pretty close. One thing that I noticed, um, the upper level guys, right? The, the top level FBS guys have a really great game plan. They have a great game plan from game to game. They get the ball set. They know exactly what ball they're going to hit. Okay, they're prepared. They're calm. They're ready to go. That's what makes a top-level FBS guy. If you can do that, the D2 level or FCS, there's, there can be no difference, right? It's the same sized field. It's, it's mostly about how prepared are you, how likely are you to go out there and execute the game plan that you've made for yourself. FBS guys have, have just typically been doing it for longer, right? A lot of times, that's what ends them up in FBS is that they were doing that at the high school level, so they've just carried it on. It's usually just years of experience that have gotten them to that level uh, and FCS guys and, and D2 guys typically from what I've noticed have just been lagging behind in how long they've been taking punting as seriously as FBS guys. Okay my punts spiral but don't turn over. My punts get off about a 45 degree angle go up like this. I, I know this way too well so it goes up like this then it goes like this fades down probably to the left if you're a righty probably to the right if you're a lefty and checks it usually checks to the left sometimes we get the forward bounce every now and then it comes backwards why does this happen uh one answer okay there's a variety of reasons why you this might be happening but the truth is you're hitting the back side of the ball so what that means is you know the football bing right here okay there's the front side there's the back side. So both of them can cause a spiral. The Like the middle front is kind of where that turnover spiral is. That back side, that back middle, is where that back side half turn hits it is. And if you hit up right up the seam in the back middle, that's where you get that kind of ugly spiral. Typically it happens because you have your drop table too out, too far out, you're making contact too low, maybe you're pushing the ball out, or you're wrapping your leg around. So the angle your leg comes up to hit the ball can sometimes hit the backside, cause it to not turn over. There's literally like a billion reasons that cause that, but, or there's a billion reasons why you hit the backside, but the truth is if that's a spiral you get, it's the backside spiral miss it. Um, video on punting drills, it'll be coming out. What weight training do I recommend? Um, Huge, big, most important one, right? Like if we're just talking about punting, 
punning power, stuff like that, huge is glutes, okay? So the punning, the whip effect created by punning has to do with you quickly driving your hips forward. How do you drive your hips forward? Squeezing the glutes together. Glutes are by far the strongest muscle in your body, also the most important muscle to punning. Next, you probably have like your quads, okay? From there on, you have core stability. Anything upper body, if you're a punner, while it is nice to be very strong upper body wise, uh, it, it's mostly aesthetic for punning, right? You can maybe argue that, oh, what if I have to shed a block? But if you're a great punter, you don't have to make the tackle. Yeah, I said it. Anyway, next question, the last one I'm going to take for today. Uh, I'm trying out for my school's football team in the spring. It's a D1 program. Any advice? Go out there and hit your ball. Go out there and hit your ball. I've seen some of your film. Just go and try to hit consistent every single time have some confidence have a little bit of swagger have a little chip on your shoulder right that's what coaches want to see they want to see a guy that they know has that mental space like okay he's a football player who punts he's not a punter who's trying to be on a football team if that makes sense go out there and just be a ball player right just be a baller do what you got to do anyway hope you guys are having an amazing day that was today's q and a bars and i'll see you guys on the next one peace